Hello, everybody. Welcome. It is Sunday night, and we are here with a, another showing of uh, Like Clockwork, our actual play that takes place in Le World de Caliphus or Caius. Um, and yeah, we're here. We're going to do the thing. Uh, we're going to go around real quick and say hi to everybody and see what they have going on, if they would like to share, before we get started. And as usual, we're just going to go right down there and start with Sin. What's up? Hello. Salutations. Bonjour. I don't know any more hellos. Um, I am doing good. I am super excited. Episode four of a podcast I'm on for a mini series for Cast Party comes out tomorrow. And I also start work soon. Yay. That part's not yay, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's insulting. Okay, well, that is super exciting. And so with that, we'll go over to Joey. What's going on, Joey? Oh, man, I play so many games, actually one every single Sunday. It's the functionality of clocks or something about how clocks work. Um, and other than that, I'm also starting a job and moving uh, within the next week, so I am quite busy, other than my full repertoire of games that I play every Sunday at this time. Yes. You play games on other days, you just play other games with other people. Yeah, but not like for other people to see. I don't do it out in the world where people can view me. Mm, I don't know, mm -hmm. I've seen you on a stream with Nuka a few times. I'm a I'm yeah. a chronic liar. <laughs> he, he, he takes it. If you he takes if you me, he takes while you're our child. <laughs> Practicing, yeah. getting Nuka in Gaming is a video gaming Twitch channel uh, with our friend Nuka, and uh, that is N U K A A. So maybe that's Nuka. Ah! Um, anyway, that's how I'm gonna. It's call painful it. to watch. Yeah, uh, but in any case, sometimes Joey's there. Mm -hmm. What's going on, Isabit? Um, not much now. The stream it's on's over, so I've just been relaxing. Um, tomorrow night I'm going to be on ESP D and D um, for Stormwatch, um, where I play a Urchinasi monk who is very grumpy. Um, but other than that, just relaxing now. Uh, you did? I will. Uh, I have to say, too, you're not giving yourself enough credit. All of the videos from the streamathon got edited and put up on our YouTube because of you. So you should take some credit for that work because that's a tremendous amount of hours just for the streams you were in, let alone the rest <laughs> of them. So you should totally take credit. Um, also, all of them, them are awesome. on YouTube? So, yeah, yeah I got them. all of them up. All I got the last them? one up. Yeah. That's, that's a yeah, lot. Yeah. yeah, I finished getting them up uh, Friday night, I think, is when I got the last one up there. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, I, I, I was just doing what I was supposed to do. That's it's, 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 it's a lot of that's a lot of work. Um, You're amazing. Okay, okay. Now it's somebody else's turn. All right, all right. John, 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 you're awful. John, you're amazing too. You're also amazing, Thank John. You. Tell us about the amazing things you're up I to. I mean, I also have no humility, so I am shameless and have no problem talking about myself. <laughs> um, I'm an Aries. That's what happens when you're full Aries. Uh, so along with the stuff that I normally do in my everyday life, everything is gay, even the straight stuff, my pop culture podcast, where this last week I talked about the Power Ranger movie from 2017 and why it succeeded and failed, mostly failed. Um, my horror sci-fi audio drama, um, which is halfway through season two at this point, Surf City Donuts. Uh, season two is getting weird and angelic, and I love it. Uh, most importantly, this upcoming Friday, Rem is helping me fulfill a dream I've had for my entire life. I am going to be a game show host. I am hosting the first ever Rem Alternus Trivia Night. And because we are premiering on 9-9, nine -nine, 
I am hosting a 90s TV trivia night specifically, and you're going to be able to level up based upon how many points you get. You do have to be like in the Discord in order. You can play along in the Twitch if you want to, but if you want to be a contestant and actually get real points, you have to be in the Discord group and actually like be on the stream. Um, but I'm very excited about it. And even if you don't have very much 90s TV knowledge, the point the questions just get harder. So you could still win by virtue of like the first two or three questions. This will be pretty uh, pretty well known trivia knowledge at that point. So yeah, again to live my dreams. Rem Alternus helping people live their dreams. Helping people live their dreams. Welcome America. What? Welcome to our stream. What do you dream of, Alex? I dream of winning fantasy football this year. That would be great. Thanks. Uh, busy week. Well, me. I hosted our draft, so we had the whole thing, the big draft board, and we like had a bunch of people over. Had to clean my house. It was a lot of work. Uh, and I got fourth pick of the draft. I think I did okay. You don't know until like you know a couple people who like might be questionable or injured play. You know, it's gonna it's gonna take a little time to find out if uh if my rust paid off. But that's what I would like. I would like I would like to win in fantasy football. I came in third last year. It was close. COVID got me though. I had too many players out at the same time with COVID. Uh, did you put it all in the Colts? Because I understand the Colts are a really good team. That, that's that's team. not how that works all your money on red all of your money on the colts it's just a different kind of nerdiness it's you know you're still it's still fantasy just football fantasy you know yeah football fantasy is why they call it fantasy football mm -hmm. but so fantasy is nerd stuff so it's just different i am um, i want to see like a show or like a, a series about someone who is just so deeply invested in their fantasy football and then they like start going you just maybe think about it like unless they're out with injuries and like actually going out like <laughs> like attacking football players and messing them up so that they can't Have play you and then seen like, the league that is a real show and it's fantastic and i highly that's a real show it. It's a comedy. It's amazing. Uh, filmed uh, here in Chicago, Chicago writers. Seriously, the league is, it's worth it. Even if you're not in, in the fantasy football. It's Let it be yeah. known that I am brilliant. They, they took that idea right out from under you. Like seven yeah. years ago, but like, yeah. Well, I just, you know, I, they were I quick. never had that. I never heard of it. So I had that idea on my own. That's a thing. People have ideas on their own. And that's an idea that I just had that could be made into a show. We all know because it did. Yes. Yes. Things would be yeah. different in some ways. I don't know. Sarah, hi. <laughs> What's going on? Sarah, you're muted on stream. I like the sound of Oops All Villains because it's like it's like Halloween Crunch Berries, but for RPs. Oops All Villains, Nocturne by Night. It's everything <laughs> you want more. Wow. I want Crunch Berries. It, did I, I fixed it. I fixed it. All right, sorry guys. It's my first time doing tech in like a month, so I forget how it works. Um, so what did I say? I said Tuesday's my birthday, doing things for it, and then we're launching also on Tuesday for my birthday. Not for my birthday, it just happened to be Tuesday. Uh, Mobius World's publishing superhero Kickstarter 
for their series, um, Prowlers and Paragons. Um, so it's a superhero uh, game that we've played here on REM and also on Gen Con TV. Uh, and this is an all villains supplement called Nocturne by Night. So that's coming to Kickstarter, Kickstarter Tuesday. Um, and then we still have uh, Cottlesworth Clockwork Circus issue two that just hit 70% funded. Uh, 10 yeah. days left. 10 days left. We're at 70%. So help us keep pushing uh, toward that funding goal. Uh, and you can find that at remalternus.com slash kick. Uh, and then gelatinous cube soaps. That's been doing very well. I think we're at 68% or something like that. Um, so you can get a gelatinous cube soap. And it's actually the size for a minis map of a 10 by 10 by 10 gelatinous cube. And it comes with a dice set inside. So uh, really cool there. And then it's like the, the convention hall come to you. So I get very excited about it. Um, and then finally, in the world of Kickstarters, because it's a Kickstarter month for us, is um, on September 20th, we are running Catalyst Game Labs Shadowrun Kickstarter for Edge Zone, which is the upgradable card game, which is super cool. And I'm super pleased to be part of, um, of that Kickstarter. So whew, it's uh, we're going to have four active Kickstarters at one time, uh, pretty much. So yeah that's that's a lot keeping ava busy that's right well i'm excited and i am pleased to see yeah we have 80 backers 70 percent uh and a lot often oftentimes there's like a big push at the end too so um yeah looking forward to seeing how it all pans out um in the meantime uh, wrapping up our uh, review copy to uh, hopefully be able to get that out to a few folks uh, sometime this week, maybe get a couple of reviews for the last few days uh, that we could post up uh, new reviews for issue two um, and uh, hopefully be able to share the alternate cover soon. So that is being worked on right now. Other than that, that's about all we got. So let's get into this session of Sorry, like clockwork. I, is... I keep muting myself and forgetting, but I want to comment on that, the 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 variant cover. Um, so the artist rendition variant cover is super cool because uh, Danny basically says, like, how would you do this cover? And, like, lets the artist run wild. Uh, issue one... Uh, we did the same thing and we are no longer printing those. So like people still ask like, Hey, how do I get my variant cover? It's a Kickstarter exclusive. So get your copy of issue two. So you don't miss out. Yeah. So, and with that, we are going to go into the game like clockwork because it's about that time. So, last week was an exciting time as we sort of navigated the stresses of somebody perhaps sneaking into Nugatsu's train car. Shailun went up and attempted to inform Nugatsu. Of course, Nugatsu was asleep, and so his assistant took the message. Um, they decided that probably... Nothing super important right now. It was something that they could address in the morning. 
So they left it at that. Uh, then upstairs, Perunia, uh, upstairs on the roof of the hotel, Perunia spoke with Panabon a little bit. Um, and then they all made their way back to the train, uh, where everyone else is kind of hanging out. Um, Rogelio, however, had gone on a little journey of discovery, uh, in particular to seek out a bedtime story of sorts. Uh, unable to find an open storefront, uh, Rogelio did find somebody willing to impart a bedtime story. And after that, Rogelio made their way back to the train uh, with this new information locked in his uh, metallic skull, so to speak. And that's where we sort of pick up here is with everybody back on the train, getting ready for sleep and Rogelio kind of coming aboard. Well, I did this because Lex asked me to get a bedtime story, so I'm going to try to find uh, Lex's room. Do I know where that is? Or am I just knocking on doors? Um, I'm actually slipping outside the door waiting for Shaylin to come back. So I'll be in the hallway. Then I, then I know exactly where you are. <sighs> then I definitely get back and I, uh, I see Lex. And I go up to him and I'm like, Mom, I found the best bedtime story. Okay. Uh, do you want to tell it now? Is it, is this a good time? You look like you were about to go to sleep. Well, isn't that when bedtime stories are for? That is my thought exactly. Okay. So have you heard the one about all the cats? No, I haven't. Oh, I haven't until tonight either. It is quite the tale. Let me tell you exactly what I heard moments ago. So, once upon a time, there was this town with so many cats that lived in this mansion. That was a standalone fact that everybody knew about. And there was this lady that lived with a very mean family. It was a mother and a step, a stepmother and a stepsister. It wasn't her family, but she lived with them for sure. Um... And she hated them, so she left. And she left to go live with the cats and take care of cats, because that was a thing that the town just accepted. Um, she really liked the cats and took really good care of the cats. And by the way, the, the dad cat could talk. Um, and the dad cat wanted to thank her, um, because one day she didn't want to... She missed people, and the dad cat told her to leave. Um, the dad cat's way of thanking her was attempted murder where he actually took the woman and stuffed her into a well. <laughs> and <laughs> that was a really good well that was that she was stuffed into, by the way, because she came out turned into gold and not like a gold statue that is now stuck there. Like, like she has a lot of gold and there was a star on her head. It must have came out of the well. But this was a good thing because now she was rich. So she went back to her house, flaunted her riches at some degree, and the evil, the mean sister that lived with her found out about this, and she goes, oh, the cats give out money. So she goes to the house with the cats to get money, and she doesn't like cats. This seems like a dilemma, and it was, because she apparently kicked cats and didn't like them and didn't feed them on time and many other things cats don't like. To which the dad cat, who can still talk, said, you need to leave. She didn't want to do this because she wanted the money, so she said, well, what if there was some kind of incentive to leave? And he said, oh, okay, and then went back to his strategy of attempted murder and stuffed her into the well as well. But this was a different well. This was not the gold well. This well had oil in it, and oil is not good for people, unlike me. So she went into the oil well, got taken out of the oil well, and he just happened to have a bunch of ashes that he then rolled her around in. and. Then he said something about looking out for a rooster. There was definitely something to do with a rooster in there um, or else something would happen to which she didn't listen. And then she looked at the rooster and grew a donkey tail on her head. 
Now I know you don't you, you, follow me. Follow me through this one. There's also a prince. I don't know where in the story this came up before, but it did come up before, so I couldn't put it in there with accuracy. So a prince shows up to marry the sister with a donkey tail now, but he's very hideous, and people don't like donkey tail faces. So they try to disguise her, and then all of a sudden, all of the cats start singing, and it just so happened the prince's best friend speaks cat. It was a miracle, and he said, hey, the cat said that's the wrong sister. The pretty one with all the gold and the money is somewhere else. So they said, forget you, donkey tail head, and they found the other sister, and the moral of the story is don't do bad things or else you get a donkey tail, and cats are good, and they will give you money if you treat them well. And Wells could have good things inside of them, I think. The end. I, I'm going to stand up and pat Rahelio on the head. Uh, you did good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's also, um, there, there, you know how cats are real, right? I assume so, yeah. <laughs> I haven't um, seen one yet. <laughs> Oh, well, there's a special kind of cat that if you see it and if you catch it and bring it to me, I can show you how we can do how you can get a wish out of it. it hey, what, um, what's the cat look like? Here's her for a bedtime story. Let's go. Oh, oh, we had tons of these cats back where I grew up. Um, They have like kind of beige colored bellies and like pink fur on their backs. Sometimes their like front legs have like a wing skin flap that connects to their body and they can they can glide um you see them in trees sometimes and they they have like really like circular green eyes and like a cute little tail that has hair on the ends just if you see it especially around the train maybe catch it and then we can get a wish out of it okay catch it alive right yes i, I don't know okay <laughs> Are they common to trains? Is that why you say look around the train? Um, I... No, but I saw one kind of earlier, maybe. But we should have caught it. Yeah, I think there's too many of us in the room, so... We're in a hallway. I got scared. No, when, when I saw it earlier. Oh, okay. That's um, fair enough. I'll keep my, I'll keep my eyes out. Uh, I don't think they're vicious, or at least this one, but I think you should keep an eye out and try and catch it. Okay, okay, I'll 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 look around a bit. Did you also happen to maybe see Shailun anywhere during your bedtime story hunt? Uh, no, she definitely wasn't at the tavern. That's that's kind of the first place I went, and then I got my bedtime story and immediately came back. You know what? Yeah, that's that's not really her scene. Yeah. Uh, uh, you... At about this time, I will say then that all three of them, Shailun, Perunia, and Panabon, arrive and clamber into the train car. Oh, well, I'm headed to bed. You want to hear a story? Uh, I'd love to. I, why I, do you why do you know a story? What story is it? What what, what story do you know? What, what is the, that? The story? house of a thousand cats, a million cats, actually. I will leave so you cats. to it. Not in our room, Panabon. You guys can do that in oh. there. It's sweet. It's sweet that you think I sleep. That's cute. Uh, um, I, 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 Shailun, are you sleeping in our room? Yes, um, as I said, I was staying in the train car. Sorry, there's a sneeze coming. And and you've been you've been <laughs> on the train the, the whole the whole time you've been in the city, right, Shailun? No, I literally I, just I, walked back from the hotel with you. 
No, I know, but like I didn't mean like you didn't move off of the train, but like you weren't staying at the hotel, right? You've been on the train the whole time, right? I don't have time for your riddles. I'm going I... to bed. Okay, Shailen, okay. before you go, can we have a talk? She's very grumpy. I, I just, I just. I, let her I look at Perunia about what research. That can't wait. I like I don't can. know, one in the morning at this point. Right, I forget. Some people need to sleep. Okay. So weird. All these people suddenly saying that they don't sleep. Felt like you did. Only person I ever knew that didn't actually sleep is Rosalia. So... Uh, Rogelio doesn't oh, sleep. Okay, Rogelio is okay. That's two. So oh, no, no, you said Rosalia meditated. Like, that was the whole thing. Like, but, I mean, you know, it's not that I don't sleep. It's that I have more fun not sleeping. I've had hey. enough. I, I push past the group uh, with limited success and get to the door and uh, open the bedroom door and go inside. <laughs> Plop down on the bed. I'll say goodnight. My name is across from Shailun, and so I will do the same thing, but more successfully because I'm thicker. <laughs> Way to rub it in. Uh, I do the same thing and go into our room and close it. Hello. My child. What have you learned this evening? And I'm reiterating the story. bedtime story now. <laughs> Please, go ahead. That, that is, that is, <laughs> who told you that bedtime story? That's meandering at best. Oh, a, a nice, A nice man at the tavern. Were they inebriated? What do you mean by inebriated? Oh, interesting. You have more capability, but you don't know about drunkenness. So, so like when someone has too much to drink and they just start saying words and they don't necessarily make sense together, uh, not like I do it. I do professional confusion. Uh, but if you start to get confused by someone putting words together, um, generally that's like drunkenness or inebriation. And it's, because they've had so much ale, their brain faculties are kind of weird. It's a good time to like pickpocket off of them sometimes, but generally they don't have a lot of money. Um, um, no, this story made perfect sense. Uh, cats, cats dunking people in wells does not, unless it's a bedtime like, story. Well, yeah, but I mean, I guess that would have to be a really big cat. That would have to be like a dragonborn sized cat. Let me let me let me tell you about it. They can also talk, and I, I, I mean, definitely reiterate this story to him. I mean, after all of the things I, that I've seen, I believe that because there was like a giant wasp that almost killed your uh, your other parent. So yeah, like I could believe that. We just don't have any of those here. Maybe we do. I don't know. The world's gotten weird in the past few years. Like the whole, the whole magic thing. We could have talking cats now, and I just haven't met one yet. Oh, but wouldn't that be great for like a carnival attraction, though? Yeah, like oh, the pink ones with wings. The pink ones with wings. Yeah, the pink, the pink cats with wings. The the beige underbellies. I know that's a cat. I've never seen the. Most I can think about that would be uh, what 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 is the interest in pink cats? Oh, well, you just said interesting interesting cats at a carnival. I just that sounds like an interesting cat to me. Yeah, but that's like putting a hat on a hat. Like if the cat already talks, you don't want to distract with too many colors. But like that sounds like a separate thing. Ah, fair enough. Okay. Well, it's it's rather. Uh, I don't feel like sleeping yet. And I would like other people to enjoy their sleeping time. Uh, so, I, I, GM, I don't know if this train in the dining car, if you can just, like, stay up all night, but I would be happy to go to the dining car to have coffee and chat with my child without the corrupting influence of their other parent in the room. Okay. Uh, if that's what y'all want to do. Um, Drew, what are you up to this whole time? So... Drew is used to um, 
you know, okay. traveling around, going from tavern to tavern, performing. Um, and after she does that, she's she normally um, kind of checks her things to because she always like leaves her stuff unattended. So she wants to make sure nobody has stolen anything. Um, so when she gets back to the train car, she is going to lock the door. Is there are there windows? Is there like a small window in the the room? In the door? Uh, there's a window that there's a big window that lets you see out as you as you're cruising along in the train, but it's got a, it's got curtains. She can close. Okay. So she's going to close the curtains, lock the door. Um, she's going to go through her bag to see if anything's stolen. Um, is there any way, would she be able to tell that somebody went through it? Um, do you, does Drew have some, any special means of, um, of categorizing what's in her bag? Um, I mean, she knows what she keeps in there. She knows that she has her journal. She knows that she has, like, just kind of nothing too personal or anything like that. But she knows what's in there. So she knows she would notice if something's missing. Right. Um, but I don't know um, that she would be able to tell if somebody just kind of, like, rifled through it. Make an investigation check. And we're looking at a fairly high DC of 20. Oh, you I got an 18. So, okay. no, all looks well. Okay. Um, the next thing that she wants to do is she is going to kind of hunker down in her, her room. Um, I'm assuming she can hear, like, people, like, all of them out there, like, talking and leaving, yeah, going up absolutely. in the hall. Absolutely. Um, when it is quiet and she doesn't hear a bunch of people going back and forth or talking, um, she would like to exit the train. Mm -hmm. um, she wants to go somewhere kind of secluded um where she can have some privacy and okay. she takes her um she takes her loot case with her okay okay yeah um there's lots of places uh there's just uh i mean even just the the area outside the train there's there's a there's a covered area uh, where it's not completely um built yet but that's where People would wait to get onto the train. Uh, there's the hotel itself um, with the, uh, there's the open dining area and everything. Someone would probably come up to you and ask if you needed anything there, but then they probably wouldn't bother you. There's. Um, She's looking for more of like, is there um, like trees somewhere where she can like go in like kind of away from people where there's like dirt. Uh, yeah, if you went over back towards the warehouse that you had been at earlier, where Rogelio kind of showed some of his abilities, uh, okay. that's a, a good a good spot for that. Okay, um, she's gonna head there, and while she's walking, she I want to make sure that I'm not being like she wants to kind of be aware of if there's anybody around her. Sure, uh, give me a perception check as you go. All right. Oh dear. <laughs> she does not notice if anyone <laughs> is watching or following her. Okay. Um, she is gonna go um back like behind the warehouse. Um, and she's gonna kind of just stand there for a few minutes to make sure that nobody comes up to her. Um, and then she's going to kind of sit down on the ground and open her loot case. And um on the bottom, she's gonna take out her loot and set it to the side. And underneath um the inside of the loot case is uh like velvet. And she's gonna like lift up, there's like a little like hidden compartment, and she's gonna lift it up and pull out some papers. And she's going to um dig in the, the ground a little bit to make a little hole and drop the papers in it, and then press to digitate um a flame on it and burn the papers. And then cover them back up. And go back. Okay. <laughs> Sarah's face. <laughs> Sarah's like, you're burning papers in a hole? I can't even believe what's, it anymore. What's even worse is that you didn't search the loot case. When did you in, in the tavern? Like you searched the bag and you forgot about the loot case. <laughs> I wouldn't have cared. I wouldn't have thought to do that. Like that's not Shailun's thing. So no, but no, like the, the, just the amount of, I told you so. <laughs> that this circles back to to Panavon. The, the amount of weird things everyone just keeps doing. 
Um, but yeah, she's going to cover it up, like kind of pat the flames out with the dirt and then put the loot back in the case and go back to the train and go to sleep. Okie dokie. Well enough. As the sun rises and there starts to be some movement and people milling about, Panabon, do you uh, give me a constitution saving throw? Oh, how do I do that? There it is. Oh, sad times. So at some point, Rogelio, in the talks, just in like the last hour or so, um, despite their best efforts to stay awake, Panabon does kind of nod off, kind of right at the end. Uh, not 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 like Panabon fell asleep, but just in like the last 30 minutes or so, or so uh, Panabon has kind of nodded off there. Um, in 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 the seat, um, kind of leaving you. Leaving me, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the absentee parent style. Uh, but I'm I'm just gonna pick Panabon up and bring them back to their room. Um, you know, put them in whatever bed or or cot there is that uh, Perunia isn't in, because I think they share a room, right? Sure. Yeah, uh, this is this is what morning. wakes this is what wakes you up, Perunia. It's as the sun is rising. Oh. So you do sleep. He does. I put him in the cot. I mumble the phrase long tongue, no hands. Mm. Nightmares again. That's probably the real reason why they don't want to sleep. You can hear outside, there are people, uh, there's definitely movement, there's like the sounds of just sort of this town waking up. Um, the hotel uh, has some some activity kind of, pardon me, bustling around it, and there are people sort of heading back and forth from the hotel to the train as they are loading you know, their stuff back on, anything they had taken off the train. Um, as the cargo uh, train car in the in the back that had been uh, removed and replaced, as that is being reloaded, um, so definitely a lot is starting to kind of happen at this point. Can I try and catch Shaylin whenever she wakes up? I mean, she's in there. I'll just stand until she wakes up. <laughs> Shailen wakes up. Let's is just kind of standing there quietly watching. With with like a very like scrunched up little like piece of paper in my hands. Can I help you? Maybe. I I feel like you, out of everyone. In this group, you probably know the most about Fey stuff, Shadow Fey magic, and that, that stuff. Um, I don't know about that, but what? So, I saw a creature last night, and it's kind of worrying me, because I do know that it's not um, necessarily natural to this plane all right uh i hand shaylin the sketch uh of the thing that i described to rahelio um which is like a little like horned glider it's like pink and fuzzy and it has all the things i described earlier <laughs> Okay. So, so I don't know if you've seen it around or you know if like they've recently started living here. Um, why are, are you concerned? Did it attack you? No, um... 
I just get a little antsy when I know things don't come from this plane, like those giant wasps. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of no fun things that live in the Shadow Fay, but there's also some good things, like Rosalia. So you've named it? No, Rosalia is an elf. Oh. And is our friend. Uh. I think. Oh, okay. I don't know. I just thought maybe it'd be important to know. Because from what Panabon has shared, it seems like these things follow you guys. I don't know about follow, but there's definitely been... portals, for the lack of a better word. But I don't think they necessarily have to do with us. There was one in the Oasis... Uh, Suslam in the water in, in their lake um, with fish demon things it was weird but like not necessarily <clears throat> anything to do with us okay so I should double check Panabon's stories is what I'm hearing don't trust anything Panabon says Panabon just says words to try to get a reaction uh oh, okay um but from what I'm understanding is you don't necessarily think things from the Fae are bad. Correct. Okay. Uh, thanks. And I just awkwardly am just going to walk out. I'm going to whisper to Minya. <laughs> <laughs> Best keep out of sight for now, I think. Yeah. Um, so with that, Lex has stepped out of the train car. Uh, same thing. There's actually people getting uh, moving around in this train car, even as they're bringing some stuff in. Uh, you don't see uh, Nugatsa uh, or Callus. You don't see um, everyone else seems to still be in their rooms. I'll knock on Perunia's door. Perunia opens the door as you go to knock. So it's one of those awkward things where you're like, oh, and like the door is opened already. Um, and she's like, oh, um, hi. Um, I'm going to take a quick lap around the train. I'll see you in a little bit. I got a, you know, morning jog. Yeah. And she awkwardly moves back quickly because she does not want to have a conversation right now. As you walk away and leave the train car and I just look after you, did everyone try drugs at the fight yesterday? <laughs> I want to step out of the room and, and tell her no. Are you sure? You, you hear, you hear Panabon, Panabon you wait. Breath, long tongue, long tongue. <laughs> and and Panabon, this whole thing wakes you up. You didn't, you hadn't like fallen fully asleep. Like you're just like super tired from being up all night. So you're able to kind of come back to and wake up uh, as this oh. happens. Oh, it's morning. Uh, oh, well. Oh, good morning. How you doing? Still mad at me? I, I assume Shailen is still there. Did you move away from the door and I'm talking to the door um, now? So as I, I say that, and uh, your room, I guess, was still open from Perunia trying to get away from me, I'll just close your door. <laughs> So that's a yes then, and then I just like decide to be like, uh, oh, you know what? It's daytime. They take care of themselves. I just go back to sleep. But I can, I, uh, tell, can tell me before, about the thing later. Before she shuts the door and follow Perunia if possible, because I assume as one of her three managers, uh, I, I understand that where they might be going. <laughs> But if they're mean, like, yo, back off, I'll, I'll back off. But like, I just I just figure I, I'm in the know of where they might be going. So yeah, Perunia, as, as you hop off the train, after about three or four steps, uh, Rogelio kind of quickly sidles up beside you. Let me do the talking this time. Got it? Got it. You're here just for your looks. 
as Got you it. are moving out and kind of looking, you see there's a lot of people now kind of moving back and forth from the train. You can see Nagatsa over near the rear, uh, supervising along with Callus the loading of several items onto the train in in the in the rear. You imagine some more of his uh, various devices and things he'd been working on. Um, you kind of look around and you don't see um, the individual that you were told would be here um, as as you're as you're looking uh, about um, and uh, and then you hear oh hey uh, Perinia um, and you turn and it's Roger Avril uh, or Avril sorry I'm gonna do that forever uh, Avril um, uh, hi I um, I'm here for, uh, well, Ernest asked me to come and meet you uh, to hear what uh, what you had decided. Oh, I thought I was supposed to be meeting Ivan. What what happened to him? Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. He, I haven't even seen him this morning now that I think about it. I usually stop in to, uh, you know, to say hi to Ernest uh, and, you know, just check and make sure all the numbers are good after after a, a, a fight night or whatever. Uh, and Ivan, you know, <clears throat> Ivan is kind of like his 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 right hand, like gopher guy. So he's always like on hand, hovering nearby, you know, like pouring tea and he's getting whatever, whatever Ernest needs, but he wasn't there this morning. I didn't see him at all. Now, Ernest didn't say anything about it, but he did say that um, he was glad that I stopped in and that he wanted me to ask if you, uh, had a what your what your response was to his query i do have a message back for him um but i apologize this is this is one that you're gonna have to send to him and he might send a message back um but i will join his proposition with two conditions the first of which is if i and oh, geez i don't know how much he's told you about this Ooh, speaking in code is hard. Um, if I um, am top, I would like 60-40 split, but 75-25 for everything else is fine. But at top, I want 60-40. Um, and I need to work under an, a stage name because... This, this uh, of course, I want to protect my friends and, you know, I don't want to use my real name. I can't just tell everyone I'm Avril Avenge. What if, what if somebody, you know, knows that's me and comes after me? So I don't want to use my real names. So I would like to be referred to um, as pre preferably Zane, uh, Zane Johnson, but I would also like to go by The Rock. So I'm thinking Zane, The Rock. Johnson, what do you think? Um, feels a little derivative, but uh, no. Um, are you? Did he? Are, are you gonna go to the to the Battle of Bronn in Castanede? Well, so this will all depend on how this conversation goes. Um, we'll see. That's that's Ireland's like biggest tournament. Yes. Well, all the more reason to use a stage name. Oh, oh, okay. I um. Uh, it's, it's, uh six. If if you if, if winning sixty forty, and uh, rock, Zane 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 uh, Zane she pulls out a piece of paper, writes it down. Um. Got it. Cool. And I'm also okay by just going with the rock. That's fine too. Okay, I um, I'll tell him. I guess I'll be a little late to work this morning, but uh, that's not a big deal. I just tell him I was with Ernest. Don't get it. And then he turns and heads out. Oh, I think that went well. Yeah, I asked. What I'm you. gonna have you do. Um, is 
no, you know what? I'm not. We're good. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's bad or, or good that you're not making me roll die for that. Yeah, so um, he heads off. It, he, you know, it's only like five minutes to get to Ernest's house and probably five minutes to get back and a few minutes to talk to him. Um, he eventually does come back if you're just waiting. Um, but before that happens, is anyone else doing anything in particular? No idea why, but I just got a piercing and pulsating migraine behind my eye. <laughs> sure, it has nothing to do with, with what's help happening elsewhere in this train. <laughs> Most people get like, you know, when, when you get like that burning sensation in your ears, for, for Shailene, it's, it's, okay, some, what are they doing right now? <laughs> Um, I guess I would try to check in with Callis and, um, and the professor. So I guess I'll walk to the hotel since I, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, stepping outside, there's a lot going on. And of course, one of the, the, the more ruckus, uh, causing is just the loading of the train car in the rear. And so, uh, your attention is drawn there and you can see, uh, Callis and Nugatsa both are there. Uh, just kind of supervising again the the loading of a lot of this equipment that they're bringing back with them from uh, Jilaluti to Castanid. I'll head over. Uh, as as you arrive, Callus turns. Oh, Shailun, um, Professor, uh, and Nugatsa turns. Oh, uh, yes. Hey, uh, hello. Good morning. Um, I received your message, so. Um, I was able to procure this, and he pulls out a small box. Um, this uh, will, uh, before we head out, we'll uh, just, you know, pack the train car and uh, ensure that there's nothing there that um, that is uh, of note or concern. And if there is, then, you know, we'll be able to dispose of it. Uh, technologically, you mean? Yes. Uh, I wonder, just that made me think, I wonder if there's potential magical ways mm. that people could do the same. Um, I'm going to have to think on that. That's disturbing, but also useful. Possible. But I'll say this. If Miss Chenoweth and her lapdog have some means to listen in on my train ride for the next day, magically, they can have it. <laughs> I, I, what I mean to say is that I really, really don't believe that they have those means available, even if such means existed. Oh, um, that reminds me too, just in case something happens, like what happened on the train before, I've been working on this. Um, I had a lot of downtime yesterday, which was very very nice um but here and i give him one of the um whistles uh so if, if there's danger uh, uh and and i'm relatively close by i should hear it and and i can come running so if those quacks try to attack you again or anything like that see well you are rather industrious you managed to do all of these things oh when I'm not running for my life, yes. Um, speaking of, of which as well, um, we had talked yesterday about perhaps me being able to copy your research. Did you not do that yesterday? He turns to Callus and Callus looks at him and she looks at you and she looks a little puzzled. I I talked to you at dinner about, um, about being able to, my ideas about Rogelio and being able to incorporate them into legs or something else. And then just being able to take a look at the research and see if, if there's anything that triggers additional ideas, but we didn't actually 
Y yes, I, I I thought you were speaking of those things after the fact. You did she not? And Callus looks at you and says, um, "We spent the afternoon yesterday copying those notes over." I spent you yesterday. And I, you 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 and I. I spent yesterday afternoon on the train with my research making those diagrams and also making your your whistle. I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like this at all. <laughs> that is I mean, and Callus looks to Nagatsu, and Nagatsu says, no, 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 that, you, you're not mistaken. I, I was there as well. Elune, you approached and asked to copy those notes and then spent much of the afternoon copying them uh, with Callus's aid. Where? But in our suite. The first time I've been at your suite was last night when I came to tell Callus about the intruder. And I believe you. Interesting. And alarming. How would that be possible? I could not say. Um, Callus is... And Callus is thinking there's perhaps some manner of illusory magic by a practitioner in the in the town. Uh, maybe Lady, Lady Chenoweth has more more at, at more ability to to. I, I'm just, I'm at a loss. That would take an illusion of that. Caliber would take a considerable amount of power, more, more power than I've seen access to. It, it, I mean, barring Rizzosi. Um, Callus nods. Yeah. Um, the the other each each aspect on its own would be something a, a junior practitioner, maybe a first or second year, could do, but. I think we but to put them all together for that extended amount of time, I believe you're correct. I, th I think we need to talk to this Chenoweth and and something else to consider. Barring being able to do such a powerful illusion is why would someone... Um, sorry, my brain just went into uh, out of character. My brain just went from uh, Shailun trying to rationalize that like, what would someone want with this research? But then her brain was like, someone knew that I was close enough to him to be able to pull off something like this. So now, like, battling with that guilt of... Um, wh why would someone to sell your, res your research to another organization or... Why would someone want to? Well, if it's Lady Chenoweth, there's a few reasons uh, and easily enough dealt with, but. I'm sorry this happened. I. It is no one's fault. Um, that said, it counts. We need to figure this out. Um, uh, uh, Shailun, if uh, you can give us a moment um, and uh, we'll see you in, in, in a few. And with that, he grabs, uh, he kind of uh, pulls Callus aside uh, and they start to kind of walk off speaking quietly to each other. Um, I, I try to 
stay there for a few minutes and my mind is kind of racing between like where would this power come from i need to tell the group um we need to come up with a plan to like know where everyone is at all times and like i just get so overwhelmed and th then thinking about like the two brand well the one brand new person and the one semi new person uh and then mr robot man um who i don't think is to blame for anything but anyway she like gets really overwhelmed and as like they're talking a little ways away and said that they'd be back in a few i i kind of turn and walk away and i speed walk back to the train car and i i go to the the room and i sit down and i just start crying Oh. And with that, we will take our 10 for Shailene. I need a minute. We'll be right back. Welcome back. At the kind of other end of the chain, as Perinia and Rogelio are there. Um, a few moments later, Roger returns. Um, so you're totally going to be at the Battle of the Braun. Um, that's it. wild. That, I mean, I hope you get there in time. It's like in three, three days. Uh, I think you'll get there in time. Um, I wonder how, but anyway, um, Ernest says, okay, um, he said that uh, that you can do the the sixty forty thing if you win top spot. Uh, I think that's he said that's still a big return. So um, uh, so we're gonna do um, yeah. So I got to do some things, but uh, but that's fine. And um, yeah, and, uh, he said that he is gonna let his person know in the um, in the society that. Um, uh, that what your name is so that they know to, to expect you when you get there and you can sign in that that's oh, that's really I mean yeah um, it's well, kind of a big deal huh oh well that's cool I, I mean it's you know it's it's uh well the society is a kind of you know uh every um uh the um the, uh, I, do you, you are you familiar with the society no, no, for, I, for, I, the, I the, the 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 Society for the Preservation of Hand to Hand Traditions is the um uh they uh, you know with all the I mean you know there, there's there's like uh all these this this technology like that's been kind of just exploding everywhere <laughs> exploding <laughs> uh, just, uh, everywhere for like the last several years and and you know like with, with firearms and stuff and everything and so uh the society is sort of uh I think they've been around like maybe 10 years or so at this point uh but they're like really uh they want to make sure that people understand like it's important to like maintain uh it's just, anyway and it's it's under that umbrella that like all the fight clubs are sort of forming uh throughout island and um like like if we get official officiated here official officialized here um then we'll uh we'll be able to uh you know to send our own champion to compete uh, probably not i mean if if you made it because that's the thing like it's it's wild because uh, uh, it's it's like a you know it's 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 like chapters. Well, yeah, like so, like each 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 nation um, will will send someone to the final uh, battle, but then each nation has their own like tournaments and like regionals and stuff, depending on how they they do. Uh, so um, so uh, Ernest must have someone that he knows. Um, I, I don't know how he's going to set that up, but, but that's oh um, because normally you're saying that somebody would have had to have. Uh, bouts to get in this and have a certain win loss record or something and be sent by their chapter. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yes. Um is 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 gonna be this like um I mean I know that I know that Ernest is like connected, like he's just connected. But um he uh I, I didn't really realize like that extent. That's that's pretty wild. Um I wonder why he wouldn't send uh um uh, you know probably 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 for the bet better uh or, or or maybe not. I I don't know that seems hmm. oh, any um, well, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, but in any case, um, 
that's really exciting. And he said, yes, so just, you know, when, when you get there, um, you're going to want to find uh, the society headquarters is there. So you're just going to look for the society uh, for the preservation of hand-to-hand -hand traditions. Okay. Um, that's, that's what you're looking for. When you get there, they have an office building there. Uh, you'll probably find it, and then they'll be able to, you know, set, set everything up with you, with you and make sure that you know, you know what you're doing. Yeah. Well, I hope Stewart isn't disappointed that I'm going. Um, uh, I mean, I don't think he knows. Um, let's maybe keep it that way, because I wouldn't want him uh, feelings to get hurt. Yeah, I mean he's 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 pretty uh pretty um. Stewart's uh, a great he's, guy. He's I like him this a sort, lot. Of, sort of fellow. Yeah, he doesn't really get upset by by things much. Um, but I think he wants like to. They were a little bit what anti magic or like, I don't know. You said like in response to like magic being in the world at the. No, no, I, I mean like magic too. I guess now at this point, but um, uh, you know, like uh, like guns oh. and stuff. You know, guns. and firearms and, yeah. and other like you know like things like ways to never wait. really got well, into that myself yeah you know, i mean handy things i i suppose but yeah nothing like punching someone out I, and and i enjoy watching that sort of um sort of uh uh you know show of of people doing that i i don't i i personally don't think i would like to get knocked out myself seems uh you know like if I were to like get into someone, I'd be more likely to get knocked out and do the knocking out. Uh, but but that's why you have friends. You're you're quite skinny. Might I suggest some protein? I'm sure you can get some bulk up. You could start a training regiment. You should talk to Stuart. He's got a whole idea to set up his own gym. Maybe. Um. Yeah. I know. I just uh, something he's been talking about. But maybe we could we could. Yeah. That's that's a good idea. I, I think that's totally a great idea. Yeah. That's really good. Um, well, anyway, Avril, it's uh, it's it's been really great that that uh, you know I I understand that like the train stopped because there's a there's like a robbery or something and that you were part of that too. Uh, so like that's not good. But well, I mean, I kind of I'm glad that it happened. I wasn't part of the robbery. Well, that, that's what I mean that you stopped. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, I didn't mean you were like a robber yourself. I just, uh, but I, I just say it like. Like it, it's it wasn't a good thing necessarily, and of course it delayed everybody. But I, I for one, am kind of glad that it happened uh, because I got to meet you, and that was really. Aww, uh, thanks, Roger. It's nice to meet you too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, thanks. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I hope you do really great, and you know, just hey, um, you, uh, if depending on what happens, yeah, well, I'm sure I'm sure Ernest will know he'll do. But if you want to like write a letter and just like say hey, yes, uh, that'd be really cool. Uh, I think anyway, um, but. Uh, but I hope you uh, have a a quiet trip the rest of the way, and and, and that you can relax, um, and that uh, you enjoy um, Castanid. It's a really big city. Um, I've been before a long time ago, but yeah. Uh, well, thank. You. Uh, all right. Well, well I'll, I'll leave you to it. I, I gotta get to the office anyway. I'm gonna be late, and uh, uh, Miss Chenoweth is probably gonna um, be pretty annoyed. So I'll I'll, I'll see you. Uh, or, or not, because you're leaving. <laughs> and he um, he just kind of starts speed walking down the way. Anybody else got anything they have going on before I go back to the sad scene near the rear of the train? Did right. any of us get passed by Shailun running back or no? I don't, uh, I don't know. Um, where was everybody? I mean, if you're in, if you're still in the train car. Then... I left the room and then didn't do anything after leaving the room yet. So where would you have gone? I probably went to get food and then ah. head back, but. Yeah, breakfast, uh, especially if you got a hotel, like, yeah, you would, you probably just gone out and got breakfast. Uh, what did Drew do? Um, Drew would have gotten up and probably just went to the dining car if it's open and got breakfast there. Yeah, it's open. They're not serving, but um, there's, oh, okay. you know, some, like, snacks and stuff. There's, like, a little snack cart and everything. Is uh, there coffee? There is coffee. Uh, it looks like there's, like, half a pot that someone had made earlier. Um, it doesn't look like there's anyone working the train car at this moment. So like anything you took from there would just be like you, you know, going in there and be like, oh, well, it's unattended, you know, grabbing whatever. And and just being like, well, they would have given it to me if I was here. Um, or not caring at all. 
And, I would have uh, left a couple of silver. I would have felt bad, like, stealing it. Um, and Panabon, give me a perception check. I'm giving you a perception check. I need more wisdom. Okay. It's not high. So you sleep. Rogelio, you are with uh, Perunia, so yeah. Um, the train mostly gets loaded up. Uh, none of you have anything that you need to get loaded back, right? I think nobody unloaded their stuff, ultimately. So um, so you don't have to load anything up. So eventually, uh, it gets to be close to time for the train to take off. Uh, is Shailun doing anything else? It's probably another, like, it's probably about half an hour, pardon me, half an hour from when you left them to when the train is going to leave. Um, is there anything else in that 30 minutes that you do? Nope. It's, I, I need the outlet and it's where I feel safest right now, even if it's okay. illusionary. Okay. Um, after a while, you hear the call all aboard. And everyone else gets back onto the train. Is everyone going to their room, or is there a place you're all meeting up to chat, or...? I'm headed back to my room. I know Panabon was still in our room, so I'll head back that way as well to see if they are awake. If I hear... Uh, uh, with if I hear them coming closer, I'll press to digitate the tears away and... Sure. Uh, and... Um, and just have my like my face in my book. Uh, we'll start with. Um, let me check something really quickly. And you, Lex. You do not hear Lex approaching. Unfortunately, your passive perception is not high enough to defeat Lex's passive stealth. Lex just moves quietly. Um, so did you lock the door? Uh, I would have. I mean, feeling scared for security right now, yes. Yes, okay. So that makes sense to me as well. Um, as you start to unlock the door to enter, uh, you hear Shailene just say something really quickly. You don't make out what the words are. And then as you enter, you kind of enter just as Shailene is kind of like propping herself onto the bed and, and looking at you uh, come in. Oh, uh, hi. Uh, I, I just, I'm like blinking aggressively at my book. Okay, uh, so, so I'm I'm sure you're probably mad at me. I, I do want to say sorry for being kind of aggressive earlier and then maybe insinuating that your elf friend was not good. But I, I'm sorry for being aggressive. I just shake my head like... I awkwardly kind of go to like sit on my bed and just kind of stare across at Shailun. Uh, feeling that pressure and kind of wanting the tears in my eyes to just run out again, even if I have to cry quietly now. Um, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to fade into invisibility. Uh, wow. Um, <laughs> That's a thing. So, like, I, I get you're mad at me. Um, if you want me to leave, I could just leave. I don't know if you're still here. 
Well, the door didn't open, so. Listen, I don't know that she can't teleport. I can't, um, actually. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> um, do you want me to just go? You don't have to talk, but like maybe shake something twice if it's a yes. I I go over to the door and open it and then close it so that she might think I left so that she'll stop. To, or he that he will stop talking. Uh, I'm gonna lock the door then, thinking Shailun has left. <laughs> All right. Um, everyone else is kind of getting on board. Um, and uh. As the train starts to lurch forward, um, you can't help but see, or as everyone's like finally getting on board, rather, um, you see, uh, just because of where you're sitting, I'm, I imagine you sitting kind of towards the front of the train, Shailen, and so your window is closed, but there's like a crack, and you can see uh, Nugatsa and Callis uh, as they approach the train. Uh, they stop. Uh, Nugatsa turns to Callus. You see them conversing a little bit. Um, and then he turns and boards the train. And she takes several steps away uh, and then turns to watch as the train then uh, just a few moments later starts to roll away. Leaving Callus at the station. So Callus is staying? That's what it looks like. Other than that, the train begins to leave from Ariad. Um, anyone who is keeping track of a lovely train facts would know that um, despite the stop in Adi had not having been planned. The distance from Adi to Giladi is about a thousand miles, a little over a thousand miles, and that it's another like thousand six hundred, thousand seven hundred miles to Castanid. Um, and you will be passing through uh, Trelepia, which is the capital of um, Edavund, the country that you're in now. Um, also, unbeknownst to everybody except Drew, Drew's uh, country of origin. And um, it's about a two-day train ride, um, nonstop. Uh, it, sh it will stop in Trilepia for like just an hour just to kind of let people kind of uh, hop off real quick. Um, there, there are some passengers that may change in and out there, but it's not a long stay or a long stop. And then it will move up, go on to um, Castanid, so. Is anyone doing anything in particular during this day of travel? I would wake up Panabon when I got back to the room. Uh, oh. I'm assuming Rogelio is still with me as well. I actually wanted to break off and see if I could find Shailun. Okay. Then I uh, will wake up Panabon. Um, and like, I know that I shouldn't startle them, but also, like, I'm too excited to not. And so I would probably just, like, jump on their bed and be like, Panabon, Panabon. And, like, that whisper, because I don't want necessarily everyone to hear, but I want them to hear and wake up. Oh, hey, you're not mad at me. Good morning, afternoon, evening. How long did I sleep? Uh, like, 10 minutes. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sure you're fine. Yeah, I'm good. What's happening? What's happening? What's going on? Did, uh, did, uh, did Gimpy McStumpleg show up to your thingy? No, no, they sent uh, Roger in his place. <laughs> uh, did Roger oh say God, did you see him today? Um, no, no, that it, he hadn't seen him at all. Did you stab uh, him? Did you stab him? Did you? Did you stab uh, him? Uh, I, I, uh, um, things are complicated in the world in which I live. <laughs> 
That is what I will. So say. you stabbed him. That's what I'm taking away from that. Got I, it. I mean, I you say that like it's not an art form. I mean, I use. <laughs> you know, you remember how? Uh, you remember how? Um, Aegis was talking about acupuncture. Like, if someone asks for acupuncture, what am I supposed to do? Tell them no. You know. Wait, did you? No, you didn't do acupuncture though with a knife. You just like okay. Anyway, stop. Stop. I mean, acupuncture is, is pointy, is what it is. That's 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 all I really learned is that it's pointy. I mean, that is what Aegis taught us. I I think yeah. we missed some finer details of that training. I don't think we're doing it right. Um. Anyway, oh, that's back more to fun this, this way. I I I'm in. So so I told him. Um. Well, I mean, I told Roger to to tell Ernest, but basically I said. 60 40 if we win instead of the 75 25 for everything else and and um i chose a new name because then if my list um my name shows up in the list and they read it in helicune they won't read avril because you know a bunch of them now know that avril is also perunia so like i got a new name um so it's sane so we're we're good but uh, also we zane? yeah yeah zane johnson but i think i'm gonna go by the rock so it'll be Zane the Rock Johnson. Why wouldn't you I go think by it the mountain? Sounds very Ireland. Why would you go by the Rock? Why wouldn't you go by the mountain? Mountains are bigger than you know, rocks. Actually, I guess just, mountains are big rocks. We should have talked to you first, man. I, I kind but, of out. Well, you no, know, it's okay. The rock, the rock's fine. You'll be, you'll do great. Uh, so that's that's really. I'm very excited for you. I'm I'm less uh, excited. How are we gonna tell Shaylee? I am also less excited about. Well, considering she's super mad at me, even though I'm not trying to be cryptic, there's just things I don't know. So I, I probably not me should be the one to tell Shailun. But also, oh, there's just a lot on Shailun's her, okay? I what mean, just... honestly, is she going to want to go to something? What no. What is it called? Did, I, I don't remember if I ever learned the name of it or not. But, uh, like, Battle of the Brawn, gonna... apparently. The Battle of the Brawn? That's an excellent name. Oh, I'm so jealous of that. That's like that's like the best play ever. It sounds like. I mean, you're totally gonna win. So I I feel sad for the other people that have entered thinking they're going to win. Yeah, you're and totally also about that, it's like kind of shady how I got in because I was supposed to like win all these other matches, but like whatever. Anyway, I mean, I think they, right they, now is not win. Win. Yeah, yeah. And just, so you and I will just go and yeah. we'll do the thing for a little while. And if I lose, she'll never know. And we will not have put up any of our own money. And it's not any of my other names in there. So she won't know necessarily. And then if I win, I just come back with extra money. She'll probably be glad for the time away. Do you, yeah, want me right? to have, do you want me to put your extra money with my extra money so it's just like extra money you can get later? Yes. There we go. See? People think I'm stupid, and I don't know why, but, like, doesn't it ever occur to anyone that there's just, like, extra money just in case? Because something's going to go horrible in the next week. Because it always does. That seems right. Yes. Yeah. I think that you'd be a fine no. money manager. Oh, no, I'm not. Thank you. I just know how to steal things. I mean, oh, relocate. you also need to tell your son to not tell Shailun, because Rogelio uh, was one of my managers and definitely was there when we arranged this, and... Why, why did you make the newborn automaton one of your managers? Did that... Okay, well, I did didn't. Did I get the time? I, I didn't. Uh, it just it just happened. Um, yeah, that's what happens when, when you and Shailun are, are not around. Um, I mean, I mean, come so you on. you need to talk to your oh, son. Just, okay, I, I, I will talk to my child. I don't want to prescribe gender markers onto them until they're ready to take one. We're still making sure they like Rohelia. Let's make sure they like their name before we go into Agreed. gender philosophy. That's, that seems fair. Yeah. Got we it. have we have a little bit of a bigger problem, and I should probably share it. Oh, from now on. Um, and like, I want you to not... This is between you and me. Um, I, I wish I had, like, a thing to make sure nobody was eavesdropping. But, like, so I may have done some light stabbing but it wasn't like stabbing for no reason there was reasons and so like you know how the people in the corporation that Nugatu has ran themselves with they're like bad people right yeah they're my yeah. type of people unfortunately um oh and and the guy was my type of people from back in the day from before i was a person with jeweled eyebrows and 
So we're going to come across more people like me that are probably going to want to make more wagers. And you're going to need to start thinking about that because if that's how this country works, you're going to get a lot of offers from a lot of people that are threatening a lot of things. Okay, that's, I didn't hear anything after the fact you said you weren't born with those eyebrows. I definitely assumed you were born with those. Well, no. No. Good point. No. I'm not. I- I hope you're surgically implanted. I'm born with my surgically implanted. Have you ever met anyone that was born with jeweled eyebrows? Good lord. I don't know. Like I, I had these implanted. They were I don't know a lot of small people. Actually, technically it's not like great because it's like it was kind of like a reminder of the things that I've done. So like every time I look in a mirror, I'm kind of reminded about choices I made. So like, it's kind of like a penance thing, but, it, but like, if everyone thinks they're like cheerful, that's great. But for me, it's like a reminder of things, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So anyways, just so you know, just for future, because this will be happening a lot in this country, apparently, because it just started even across the border. Um, you're going to get a lot of that. And I mean, there's a 95% chance that at some point, Someone's going to try to double cross us. I would not be surprised if there's a couple people in the match that have either been instructed to take a dive or will instruct you to take a dive under habit and mortal peril. So, like, uh, do you still have those beads, Taylor made? Uh, did I get a bead? She checks her pouch. Yeah, I, I think I've got a bead. Yeah. I would make sure you have one on your person at all time, just in case you need a quick gateway and I'm not there, because I'm not going to be able to be in, like, every locker room. Um, but just, okay. just sure. have one with you at all times because I, I love you, but you're not sneaky stabby. You're good stabby, but you're not sneaky stabby. You're more like daytime stabby. Rude, but okay. I mean, you can, but your sword is like a flame. It's like a flaming sword. Your sword turns it's into flame. It's a little noticeable, like I guess. I yeah. guess you could say No, that. it's very noticeable. Yeah. How many flaming swords do you see on an everyday oh. like occurrence besides the one? Well, not other ones come to mind. There you go. Uh, I also decided, no, I don't know if I've decided this or not. I think after we've killed Flemmy, I might just go back to Maricadasta. I really liked being there. Did not Maricadasta. Where was the canyon place? We were just in the canyon place. Hello, the that. Yeah, that one. I had like a little, I had like a little cult of kids that I was teaching you pickpocket is. It was so cute. You know, what do you use? cult like that i I, i'm concerned i mean it's not like i wasn't like i'm a god but like you know it's like a cult it's like they they think you're really cool they want to get jeweled eyebrows i don't tell them they're surgically implanted but it's like a rite of passage see they think you're born with it too i know and i don't tell people the truth i'm telling you the truth you should feel very honored i guess i'm honored talk to rogelio i will talk to rogelio first i'm gonna go get some coffee Yes, I will talk to Rogelio Thank soon. You. Yes. Also, oh, congratulations on pre-winning the fight. Congratulations on pre-winning the fight. I'm gonna go get some coffee. Pre-winning. Okay. So it's it's a, you're gonna win the fight. It's it's a pre-winning thing. It's congratulations. Ooh. So back to the beginning of that conversation, as Perunia had gone into the room, Rogelio turned around and knocked on Shailene's door. So there's a knock at the door. Lex. Uh, I like go to unlock the door and I open it. Oh. Uh, hey, Rahelio. Um, do, do you want to come in? Oh, hey, Mom. Uh, I was actually looking for a Shailoon. I think I made her more mad and she went invisible and then left. Oh. Well, I'll I'll come back another time then. <laughs> um. Do you do you you don't know where she went, do you? She's invisible and and closed the door when she left. Um. So no. I mean, I can try to. I don't know. I'll 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 look around and see if anything is is floating around. Then, um, I mean, she might not be invisible 
after she left. I think I just made her really mad, so I'm trying to give her space. Okay, then I I will I'll look around the train then, and and if she, I'll I'll stop by later if she comes back. I meanwhile think okay. that I'm very uh, clever, and a wonderful sneaker. You just have two dumbasses in the room. <laughs> I just I just imagine like the the awkward creak as I sit back on the bed and there's an indent where my butt is and yet you guys are like where's she loon <laughs> hashtag where's she loon danny with the idea that i'm now hunting for an invisible person i want to use some of the power in the in the nasura's core and and uh cast detect magic ah oh, shit <laughs> okay <laughs> You can have magic, and immediately there in front of you is magic. Um, I just kind of glance directly over at it. I'm like, I'll go look elsewhere. (laughs) And and the magic that you see is definitely illusion magic, the kind of magic that invisibility is. But yes. Um, Question. Is is there two bodies of magic that Rahalia sees, or just the one? No, just the one. Okay. We're good. So I, I just looked directly over in that direction um, at an empty, bo- an empty bed, apparently, and I'm like, <laughs> oh. Mom, can you come help me look? Um, yes. <laughs> um, I just have to do something before we go. Uh, you're welcome to come in while I do it. Um. I just nervously look over at the cot, and I'm like, sure. <laughs> I just really walk I, into the door enough for it to close and stand there. A robot with a heart of gold. <laughs> um, I'm in an uncomfortable I'm, space right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to briefly uh, have the horns demold off my head into ears and just kind of scratch my ears really hard for a while. Before I change them back to horns. Uh, okay, we can go. And out they go. Let's talk about that later, and we, <laughs> we walk out. <laughs> we'll come to my okay. <laughs> So, uh, so Drew, did you stay in the in the um, in the canteen? I don't know what they call it in this universe. I'm to call it the canteen. Did you stay in the canteen car? Yes, I am sitting. Um, Drinking a cup of coffee, just kind of writing in my journal, people watching. Great. You see Panabon come in and not even bother looking for an attendant. They just like lift the coffee pot and pour themselves a cup of coffee and then just kind of sit down. Oh, hi. Oh, good morning, afternoon, evening, good day. What day is it? How long was the train moving? I got told I slept for like 10 minutes. I, yeah. Good. Uh, we, we just We just took off. A little bit ago, so you didn't miss much. Oh, that's good. I didn't care for that town at all. Be happy for Perunia, uh, but the rest of it, I could do without it. You know what I miss? I miss uh, oh, what was the name of the town? It was like a canyon, but it was like a town. Uh, Gila Ludi. That was really good. Did you ever go to Gila Ludi? Isn't that where I got on the train? Okay. Yes, yes. So yes. I guess you have been there. Yes. Yeah, that's where we met. Oh, good times. Hey, uh, so just give you a heads up. The things in the metal that we faced earlier, that's not going to be the last time something like that happens. So just because I like you and I think you're super neat, if you have any sense of self-preservation, I'll tell you what I told Zivid. Run as far and as fast away from us as you can possibly get. It's like, start running and keep going in, like, any literal direction. Stay out of Palakune. Stay out of Palakune. You don't want to go to Palakune. Don't go to Flinopafel if you have to go to Palakune. Stay out of Flinopafel. But, like, if you just, like, pick a direction that isn't the direction we're in and you keep running, you have a longer, better chance of survival than you have with us. And I'm telling you this because I like you and I want you to live. So just... And I take like a big sip of coffee and go, this is awful coffee, but at least it's hot. Yeah, coffee is terrible. 
Um, uh, well, I, I got to tell you, I appreciate you looking out for me, but um, I've grown kind of fond of all of you, and I think I'd, I'd like to stay. I think I might be able to help. You should probably know what you're facing if you're going to stay. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the whole story because I don't think it's not all my story to tell. But, like, there are... I don't know how much you really know about what's happened the last couple of years, but there are some bad people in the world that have gotten hold of magic and they've used it for bad purposes. And in the last... How long has it been? It's only been a year, maybe? Two years? I don't know. It's not been as long as it probably feels. But people are, like, raising people from the dead and, like, trying to take the power of gods that may or may not exist. I'm not actually clear on it. I was, like, fake following Neep away for, like, three months to annoy Aegis. Uh, and then I got tired of doing morning calisthenics because apparently that wasn't something you had to do, and I just... It seemed like it was something you had to do to follow the god. Anyway, so apparently, like, gods are real, except for gnomes. Apparently, we don't get one. I don't know what that's about. I'm still bitter about that, by the way. But it's just, yeah, so, like, we've been traveling for a long time, and it seems like the people with the best survival rates are the ones that, like, go other places away from us because... There's lots of things happening, and there's things happening that I don't understand about, and I don't like that I don't understand, because if I don't understand, I can't really face them. But, like, there's some bad people doing bad things, and they are essentially after us, and it's it's bad. And I just don't want to see you get hurt, because I, I don't even know what walking into, but everything in my body is screaming, do not do what you're about to do. But I was outvoted, so... I, I'm sorry that you you all have gone through such a hard time. Um, yeah, we got a flaming sword you. out of it. A flaming sword? Yeah, we got a flaming sword out of it, so that was really cool. Well, that sounds nice. I, mean, I don't have a flaming sword out of it, but there is a flaming sword, and that's super cool. So, Well, I appreciate you looking out for me, but if it's all the same to you, I think I'd like to hang out. Um, with th with you, um, I think that I might be able to help. And, you know, y'all aren't the only ones with the past. And, you know, I, I've, I've not been maybe the best person in, in the past, but I, I feel like I can, I feel like I can help and, or at least try. So as long as y'all have me, I'm, I'm going to stay. I think you're probably a better person than me, but you know, that's, that's a general consensus is that I'm like the worst. So, and I'm fine with that. So yeah, well, it's, I don't believe that if, if you were really the worst, you wouldn't be here trying to warn me off. Yeah. Uh, so that's, I guess, oh man, am I becoming the best? Oh, it was so much, it's so much easier to be the worst and just like go around like stabbing people in the middle of the night. It's such, it's such like a difficult thing to do a transition. Oh, well. Uh, you know, so, no one's saying you have to be perfect. You can still, you can be nice to me and then go stab somebody else. I don't mind. Oh, I love stabbing people. No judgment. But, yeah. Whoa, oh, oh, this is, so when you want me to stab someone, just use the word acupuncture. That's our code word for stabbing people. It's acupuncture. Um, oh, and I'll tell you the idea I had. So I had this idea. Um, so we're going, uh, we're going somewhere. And my idea is when we get to the place where we're going, like, we have to be, like, sneaky. I think we're going to be sneaky. I'm going to be sneaky. And so my idea is to, like, walk into the kitchen and pretend I'm kitchen staff and just, like, say it until they get annoyed enough and they believe it. And then I'm just, like, in with the kitchen staff so I can hear all the kitchen gossip. But I think this is a great idea. But Shailoon's mad at me, so she won't even listen. But I think it's a good idea because, like, who's going to have the gossip if not the kitchen staff, you know? And also free food. Who doesn't love free food? I don't want to get on Shailene's bad side because she does not seem to like me very much. And, um, but oh, I think maybe that's like a good the last idea. Three people, the last three people that we met, like tried to murder us. So like, it's, it's nothing against you personally. It's like the, everyone we meet is trying to kill us thing. Like I'm okay with it. Cause I can stab, but Shailene's not used to like murdering people yet. She's very nice normally. 
like eight out of ten. Even when she yells at me, it sounds nice. It's kind of annoying, actually. I might kill you in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, meanwhile, uh, Shailun, are you going to do anything? Um, you did note that Nugatsa had boarded the train. Um, uh, Rohelia was kind enough to lead Let's away. Um, or if you would like, Train rides two days, so you can stay in the room for what are you doing? Uh <laughs> um I I'm so overwhelmed by all of the options right now. Uh <laughs> you did just see a dragonborn transform their horn and into full ears yeah i know usual? i don't like that. that like okay okay it is not fair how much we are dealing with right now <laughs> i'm very upset and also um might yeah yeah you know what you know what having seen that having seen that Okay, I'm ready. I am gonna sit there and wait for Lex to come back. Um, I have Minya. Um, by the way, we had talked about this a while ago, Danny, that Minya was incorporeal and in objects and then I've just kind of been leaving her out now as herself can i put her back into an object no okay. so i'm gonna say that uh that was like there was some time where like there was like a recovery thing almost okay. and then and then she corporealized so like that's fine so what we're gonna do is uh minya is going to uh i'm gonna cast invisibility on minya and have Minya keep a lookout for when Lex returns and let me know. Okay. And other than that, you're waiting for Lex. I am waiting for Lex. We are going to have a conversation. Okay. Is that going to be like a take the gun, leave the cannoli kind of a conversation? Because that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Yes, sin. Never, I'm gonna wait. It's fine. I, I changed my mind. I'm just gonna, for right. no reason at all, I'm gonna make sure that I have all my spells pulled up. <laughs> all right, so uh, the train is continuing on. Um, after several moments, um, as you're sitting in the in the dining cart, you see Rogelio and uh, Lex kind of walk in. Uh, do you stop to sit with Panabon and Drew, or do you continue on your search for invisible Shailene? I didn't detect any other kinds of magic while walking throughout the train, did I? No. Okay. I mean, I, I would just continue personally, unless Lex wants to stop. Uh, We're also I'm looking for a pink cat, you. so... I, I will actually raise my hand uh, at Rogelio and be like, hey, uh, I, I know you're going somewhere, but just so you know, we're not going to tell um, Jaylun about the thing. The fight? What thing? The fight. Yeah, the, the fight. We're not going to tell. We're not going to tell. Jaylun, Jaylun doesn't need to know about that. And then, Oh, about the rock. Yeah. Yeah, just for just like if if the word the rock comes up in the context of like fighting, just pretend you don't know what's going on. Ah, just like I just wish it was case. something bigger than a rock. I was gonna suggest the boulder, but I, I wasn't supposed to talk head. as a manager. Oh, the mount—that's even bigger. 
I know. That's what I said. And they told me like, managers don't talk, talk so I couldn't say anything. Rest. Yeah. See, this okay. is what happens when I take a nap. You can't, like, <laughs> this is what happens when I nap. But yeah, so no talk of mountains, boulders, or the mountains don't exist. Like, okay. Gotcha. So, yeah, just well, the rock doesn't exist thing. either. Well, no, the, the rock does exist, but it's like Avril. But like, but like blank face. Just, just practice the blank face. Yeah, it's you got it. Talk, good job. I'm not going to talk about that meeting. Yeah, that's that that's stays, that good stays between all four of us. Okay, I know. think I think we just I think we keep moving now, and I'm going to start pushing <laughs> Rahelio out of the car. By the way, oh, by the way, I look at Drew. I go, oh, Drew, uh, did you get my message when you were in the house? Your message? That's a no. Okay, so you didn't. Darn it. But okay, that's that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. Just it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything is fine. Everything well, is good and normal is fine. and fine. While we're walking. Out of, out, out of character, if you want to find out what happened, you'll want to listen to Panabon's one shot whenever that goes up on Patreon or YouTube or wherever it things go in this universe. I am not as awesome as uh, is a bit to put that up right away. So that will be a little bit of time, but it will get up there. Um, um, as we're walking away, I'm going to put my, like, I'm going to slink my arm over Rogelio. Um While we're talking about secrets, no one else needs to know that I can change my ears, right? Are you asking me or telling me? <laughs> I'm trying to tell you in a really friendly, not mean way. Oh, got you. Yep, just like the rock doesn't exist. Exactly. Could well, I? Like, we could we could talk about it, right? Like we could talk about it. It's like I, I don't want to know more about it. I I will teach you about it. Oh, okay. Perunia, is there anything else you've got going on? I mean, I'm in the train car thinking, like, great, everything is secret. We have this handled. So Alex would like to, but Perunia is happily in the train car. Okay. We will push forward. Uh, so some time passes uh, as Lex and Rogelio move to the front of the train and don't find Shailun. Rogelio probably not expecting to find Shailun at this point, but um, as you kind of are moving back in the other direction. Um, the landscape out of the of the of the window of the train as it's traveling north. Uh, you were in the desert and then as you got to Adi Ed, it was it kind of shifted over into like uh, sort of a uh, just like a rocky scrubland and and now it's like grassy fields uh, extending pretty far. Uh, Edavund is mostly a uh, like a, a rancher style uh, country where there's lots of uh, livestock that are raised, and then there are parts in the uh, northwest that are just like farmland. But it's a it's very flat, um, sort of like a, a Kansas uh, in terms of um, of landscape. And there's a lot of that going on, but you can see very far to the east the rising mountains uh, that you are slowly angling towards. Uh, eventually, you do get back to the rear, and um, Minya does alert you, Shailu, to the perhaps return, at least they're moving this way, of um, Lex and Rahelio. And... Um, then I'm going to uh, cast, while I have time, uh, Mage Armor and uh, Invisibility. Wait, I, let me make sure that, yeah, Mage Armor is not concentration, so that should be fine. Okay. And Invisibility. The point of the car, train car that you're at, um, it it yeah they're they're coming around pretty quickly you do get to your room uh lex and are you uh, are you going to are you still like talking to Rahelio and and like 
want to uh, bring him in or well i'm sorry we couldn't find shaylun uh do you want to stay and wait till she comes back or do you, do you want to keep looking i think i'm done um that's fair enough um i don't i don't think we could should look any long i think wherever shaylun is there you know they probably want to be alone um wherever they are or they don't want to be found at the moment um what are, what are you gonna do now honestly i'm probably gonna nap maybe clean through my bag okay gotcha then i will I'll go find dad. Yeah. Um, also, maybe let's try not to talk about the whole thing. Yeah, no, no. Uh, in, in an open train car again. Uh, that, yeah, this, this one's more secret than the rock. It's a two-person no, secret, not a four-person well, secret. Well, well, no, we don't. I don't think you should talk about either. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> in, in open spaces. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair I will not speak uh, about them in open spaces and then I'm just gonna open the door and walk in All Right. You as she in. opens the door can I try to use the tech magic one more time to see if Shailun's still in there um you can attempt to yeah. cast uh let me double check Yes, uh, you cast Detect Magic, um, and you still see the same. Uh, you see two magical auras now. You see the magical aura of Illusion, and you see the magical aura of Abjuration, which is the school of protection magic. Enjoy your nap, and I let them close the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My child! Uh, which I immediately do not move from when I stand outside. <laughs> oh, okay. Because at that point, I don't know if it's Shailun. There's, there's two invisible things in there, so uh, in case. All right. Uh, Shailun, the door closes, and Lex has entered into the room. Um, okay, so uh, the first thing I would like to do is drop invisibility. Oh, sorry, before I do that, I'm going to go to the door and lock it, and then I'm going to drop invisibility. Oh, I would have locked it. Okay, thank you. Then I don't need to do that. So I'm just going to drop invisibility and cast hold person. Okay. You cast... Hold person. Wisdom. Ooh, baby. Does an 18 beat it? Yes. All right. So, Lex, give me a... Nope, never mind. Um, Rogelio, give me an Arcana check. Wow, that's... First time I'm rolling dice in this game? Whoa. Rolling dice? Couldn't even That's tell you I know how to do that. I think that it's this Dungeons one. And Dragons. I, I get it. Okie dokie. So, you are standing outside of the train car. Um, and you hear um, the casting of a spell. And... Somewhere in your brain, the formulas and everything compute, and you are aware that this is a spell that holds a person in place so that they cannot act. Um, that is the extent of the knowledge there of that. Um, but inside, uh, Lex, Shailun appears suddenly and uh, says, nope, at nope. you. 
really loud and kind of points and pauses. And then there's like this awkward moment of pause. I don't feel anything though, right? No, yeah. I, I, that's as far as you're concerned. Shailene looked at you and went, "Nope." Shrugging uh, it off. So go ahead. Do you do you need more space? Like I can go, and I start turning towards the door. Stay. You and I like, are going to have a conversation. Okay. Uh, can I go sit on my bed, or I? I am I standing here or? Uh, I go and I sit down and I cross my legs on the bed. Crisscross applesauce. So. <laughs> Joey, don't laugh at me. I want to stop this conversation by saying I'm very on edge. And you've seen what I can do. Right? Yeah. Yes. I just want to make that very clear. All three feet of me is very, like, trying to be intimidating right now. Um, so... Uh, from there, she goes, uh, good. So there's been this little problem. So apparently someone checked into the hotel as me. Someone who wasn't me, but looked like me, talked to the professor. That would constitute very powerful magic. But then I start thinking to myself, after I see your horns transform into ears, that maybe there's another way that that could occur. So I'm feeling very twitchy right now, twitchier than I usually am. So I'm going to need an explanation in, I was going to say 60 seconds while you were held, but that didn't work. So 60 seconds, or I'm going to start attacking you. What if it takes longer than 60 seconds? Start. Uh, first of all, rude. I thought you left the room. Um, Second, that was me. Uh, I am going to need more than 60 seconds. I feel like if you attack me and I get hurt, you're not going to get the whole story. And then it's just going to leave so many untied You are wasting for you. seconds to convince me not to hurt you. I mostly did it uh, just because I also need a safety net for myself. Go on. Um, 25 left. I... I didn't do anything to hurt the party, I will say that. Th there are things that you keep from me, I'm quite sure, that are for the benefit of the group, and it's the same. I don't impersonate you. I don't have spells like you, so I can't do much else. Um, I'm going to cast message to Perunia. Get to my room now. I barrel into Shaylin's room. The door was locked, which means I had to break it, because obviously that's an urgent message. I'm so sorry about your broken lock. I would 100% uh, try to really stop them. Yeah, <laughs> they they in front of the door. <laughs> no, I was right there. So, all right. No. So you send that message. Uh, Peruna, you get Rohelio. that. Yes. You hear that. You open the door. Rogelio is standing outside of Shailun's door. Um, I, I mean, like, He's a robot, so I don't know if he gets messages in his brain. Like, I get messages in my brain from Shailen, so, like, that doesn't... Like, him acting odd is not odd, because he's odd. So, I'm just standing directly in front of the door. That's just I was just standing right. there, yeah. Um, <laughs> not a problem, because I'm still bigger than Rogelio, so I shoulder open the door still. Like, I'm not, like, communicating, because I'm in rush mode. So you are attempting to Break push paper. Rogelio to the side. I mean, you know, he got a shoulder in any way. He can keep standing there if that's what he wanted to do. I would probably say something like move because like, I'm not trying to hurt Rogelio. Rogelio, do you move? I I would try to get Perunia to stop because I feel like I know what's going on in there and they're they're having a, a private moment. Like I would try to tell, like convince Perunia to stop. <laughs> well, we will start with an opposed athletics check. Oh boy. I love fear versus play. Athletics. Yes. 
well, I think you're going to win this one. Uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. <laughs> What's what happening? Wow. There's going to be stabbing, and I'm not even... All right, so uh, you do manage to shove Rogelio, just kind of knock him out of the way, and you do not need to roll to bash open that door. It is the the locks; they're not really meant to like you know nothing about this is reinforced. It's just mostly meant for like privacy, not for like security. They're not, they're not good and uh, and so Perunia, you bash into the door, and you see, however, Shailun is looking, and. However, Lex is looking, sitting cross-legged on the bed across from Shailun. Where are they? Where are they? Shailun may they? even be standing on her bed. Shailun, where are they? Perunia. I pull out my sword. I have some interesting information. I'm sorry, that's what you called me here for? Wait. Just, just wait. So. <sighs> Lex is not what they appear to be. Lex okay. can shapeshift the horns into ears. <gasps> Are you an elf? Do you well, know Rosalia? Are I, you his friend? Are you here for her? Okay, Perunia. first of all, first of all, not all Fae know each other. Technically, it's ears into horns and not horns into ears, okay? So you are an elf. So you do know Rosalia. I no, I don't. <laughs> Perunia, if, if you could focus, the other part is uh, Lex has been impersonating me okay. and stole research from the professor. Are you working with that channel with? No, but I would appreciate this conversation with the door closed. Well, I, I would appreciate, Perunia, you restraining Lex until we get real answers. Well, I mean, like, they don't look like they're being... Or I could start attacking. Lex, hi! Would you mind if I sit right next to you? Absolutely not. Okay, cool. And I'm gonna just casually. But can hug can Lex. we close the door? Could could uh, we still? Uh, that might be a problem. I don't know. I hit it kind of hard. I'd like to pick up the door and get into the room and also cast mending on it to make the door <laughs> back uh, on the mending. on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got mending. I love this episode. If I can just say, I also how much the door. I love this episode, and that Panabon is just having coffee with Drew in the canteen, <laughs> completely unaware any of this is going on. Rohelia puts day. the door up, and then you hear like some of the metal kind of twisting as it like all locks into place, and then the door lock actually turns and locks, and the door looks perfectly fine. What are you? So I... I'm me. Uh... uh, sparkle darts. Oh, oh, <laughs> stop, stop. I'm holding her. I'm, I'm not him. I'm not going to take bullshit answers. I'm going to get hit with sparkle darts. Uh, go ahead no, and won't. roll for the damage. My as sparkle you do darts not, don't miss. As you do, yeah, you do not get hit with any sparkle darts. Uh, like, even the ones that look like they're going to hit, like, spin around, um, and, yes, go ahead. This is, this is like, peak Shailun stopping an evil guy from monologuing, like, right as he begins after the evil clap. This is peak Shailun. It's so good. I have to find my sparkle darts. Oh, they're called Magic Missile. That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just thought, oh yeah, it's Magic Missile. She got to name her spells, okay? It's Sparkle Darts. No, I know. I just love that. <laughs> She's just like, oh, yeah. All right. So those, it feels like getting punched with three uh, three punchy fists. Sparkly fists. How, how many damage am I taking? Nine points of damage. Total. Whoa, Shailun. Like, please, let Lex explain. At least, like, jeez. Like, maybe before you murder somebody who I'm obviously got under control. What are you? I just, um, I take a deep breath. Um, and I'm gonna go back to my original form, which is a very, like, off-white, yellowish color skin tone. 
owned almost like an elf looking person with like kind of a short like whitish pixie cut and like piercing yellow eyes so, like kind of like an elf but like off color I have a really awkward hug because I was like holding a dragonborn size and now I'm holding like this very tiny person oh no I'm the same size oh just you're my not, horns like skinnier like as a okay not in those two forms no okay. you're a small dragonborn I am a small dragonborn. Um. Oh shit! This. An elf. N no. Uh. More like a. Some people call us changelings. Was that? Uh, now, a quick note. That word would be spoken probably in elvish mm, okay so there's there's no necessarily translation for that yet um like we don't all look like this but we all change it, like, we kind of all look like this but like kind of like in the way that all dragonborn look a certain ish way but then there's I thought differences. It was weird that your eyes changed colors. I did think that was odd. I've never seen any other dress. You're a shadow fey creature. Yes. Do you really know my brother? Yes. Okay. Does he know Is your he okay? uh, changeling word? Yeah, that. Uh, yes. Uh, it, it's part of the reason he sent me to go spy on others. Well, I mean, that makes sense. Are you spying on us? No. I mean, clearly. Well, well I mean, I followed you because you're kind of doing the stuff that they're trying to do too, so I figured, see what was working, what wasn't. Why did you steal the professor's research? To give back to them. And who is that? Because... Faro's group. Like, Perumia's brother and everyone. Like, I... I'm gonna be honest, I haven't spent that long on this plane, but, um... I don't think that it's okay for just one power to hold on to research. I don't know you guys well enough to trust that, like, this is in the right hands. I look at Perunia, there's really no chance that he's working for Fl Flamgesu. No. No. My, my brother would never. Um, and that was before our sisters were there. Why didn't you just tell us? Well, do you share everything with me? Absolutely not, but you know enough of what we've been through. <sighs> to quote you, though, last night you said not to believe everything that Panabon says, and that's where I got most of my information from. You know what happened to Gila Luti. Everyone knew what happened to Gila Luti. Okay, how about this, guys? Lex, Lex, is that even your name? Oh my god. Um, how about you give the research back? You know, no, I already no. mailed it to your brother. I don't know that one. Alexa's oh, speaking to me. Oh, you already hi there. It's great to talk to you. I need to turn off my Alexa. Hold, please. <laughs> Lex, it Alexa thought Lex was Alexa. <laughs> yes, yes, it did. Yeah, it, the part it, of it, Lex it, it will forevermore be played by Alexa. Sin, we need you to make a new character. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, <clears throat> and you see uh, Lex is like clearing their throat. <clears throat> well, um, technically that's not my name. It's the name of the person whose identity I took. Like mine. Yeah. 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 Oh, did you kill the real Lex? I didn't kill the real Lex. Technically, other people did. And then they gave me his picture and his identification and all of that. Wow, that's dark, yo. Yeah. I mean... I'll be honest, like... the. 
the dragonborn I make really helped me out. I all the time, and like, I don't have to kill anyone to do it. Get creative, man. Make up new names. You don't need okay, to steal people's okay. identity. To be fair, um, I can really only change into people I've seen. How many days till the next stop? Oh, um, just two. Um, two days. You are not welcome to continue with us. You get wait, 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 let's not, let's not be rash. Okay, okay, but like, we know that this person is now capable of impersonating any of us because to their own omission, they have seen all of us. So wouldn't it be safer to kill them, to keep them, oh, okay, dark, um, whoever this person is has fought alongside us and helped save us in different situations already so i don't love that option it's not off the table but i don't love it um but shouldn't they stay with us and then we will go confront varro and it's my brother i can convince him to get the research back and meanwhile we travel for weeks or months with a known liar and identity thief I mean, we do do that now. Well, Sorry, is that not Panabon too? That's fair. <laughs> My ears are just burned in the canteen. I feel like someone's talking about me, but I don't know the context. I'm just like, oh, yeah. The coffee's actually coffee. heating up in proximity. <laughs> oh, good. The coffee's just getting better. I don't know what it is about the coffee. Like, the third cup's just the best. I don't know. Look, my brother is not a, a technological guy. He he probably won't know what to do with it other than than hold it for a while. Like after we've concluded our business in Ireland, like maybe we need to go back to Palacoon and and get the research back. Um, I, I'm I'm sure we could get it back. My my brother is a reasonable guy, and like he would understand the the threat of of bringing. No offense, Rahelio other beings into existence that could just be used as an army like I'll yeah. take I'm not concerned what about getting the research back if your brother has noble means I have an issue with being lied to and having a spy that was sent and didn't tell us who they were and I mean we've been very clear about the fact that we've been everyone we've meet has we've met has tried to lie or kill us and now there's another liar and a traitor amongst us once again. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say he was a traitor. Sparkle darts. Oh, oh, gosh. level three. Uh, Danny, how do you want me to do the third level? There's, it's just one, an extra D four per level, right? No. Um, yeah, it's an extra D4 per level. So the way, yeah, the way it's written in there, you just hit it for, um, you just hit it for each level. I feel bad for the janitors. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 damage. Oh, damn. You're not going to like murder them right now in this train car. Settle down. Is there anything so else that you hurts. Were, Is there anything else oh, you haven't told us? Um, this is the kind of character who's gonna hold stuff to their grave. So like I don't know, that's like super helpful to just like ask. How about how about this? How about creature? How about this? How about you tell us anything that is um if we find out later would look really bad for you not telling us now. How about we give you an opportunity to tell you anything else that we would probably be really, really upset about later if we found it? Because, like, this type of situation, like, right now, that we're in, that could have um, been funded. I, like, think for, like, a beat, and you see the skin around, like, this part, like, the lower jaw and, like, neck kind of starts appearing a visage of, like, a black dragon, like, kind of tattoo etched into their face. Um, I can't really impersonate powers, but 
you know, like I get powers that make me kind of have dragonborn like powers. Like the breath stuff. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask you how you impersonated that part. Huh. Wait, 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 wait. Do you have like um do you have a, a, a like what Aegis had with his like, I don't know, patron god thingy? Do you have one of those? Oh my god, are dragonborn gods actually on this like in this world? Please tell me that. Yeah. Can, can I <laughs> I have to do a thing. Um Sorry, I'm just checking something. Um kind of like a patron, but or like a god thing, but not really. Like I don't communicate with them on a consistent basis, because I know there's some magic users who do that. Who like have to commune with a god all the time. Hmm. Um It's not but you know, like Tiamat. That's not well, it's not Tiamat. It's I don't know if Tiamat's real. I've never talked to them. Goltior? That's the uh, name of the uh Goltior is the evil Yeah, that's why I'm asking yeah. that um that the uh Inquisition is out to like root out mm -hmm. And and find. Um. Oh, are you hesitating? Yes, no. I wouldn't call them dragonborn gods. It's, it's just gods that sometimes give people like me or people from the Shadow Fey powers. Um. Oh, it's face stuff. Oh, okay, that's much better. Yeah, in Runia's opinion. I don't know how to explain it because I don't know too much about it. Okay. Um, okay. So, so does that mean you have to keep impersonating Dragonborn because that's the kind of powers you have? Do you have any other fighting abilities out like side of? Well, you do, you you do um, kind of like empty-handed monk type stuff. So, huh. it's the dragonborn powers I can do in any form. Oh, that's cool. Oh. I just tend to stick with dragonborn because then it's not. I mean, we are the best looking of all the species. So, well, it is also just not as suspicious I if I look like a. I mean, it It would look weird if I was a gnome. Are you saying who, gnomes are weird looking? No, if I was a gnome who was breathing out fire or lightning. Oh, yeah, that would look suspicious. Yeah, I could see that, yeah. yeah also, why... your face is might burn, your pretend face. You were... uh, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Um, I guess when I punch things, I can change the kind of damage around them. Sometimes it's fire, sometimes it's ice. Look, see, this seems like a useful person to have around, Shailun. But you do have to promise to not impersonate us without our knowledge again. Okay, I can do that. And um, and um, no more stealing any of our party's belongings. Yeah, I haven't stolen anyone's belongings here. Okay, fine. Or Nagatsu's research. What if I think it would be really helpful for your brother? Then you can come to me, and I will talk about it with you. And she But you can come to me. That, that's, that's fair. Yeah. Okay. Watching the two of them awkwardly restrain hug while uh, sitting on the bed across from me, um, I'll finally kind of pipe up and say, Prunia, I think you're right. Releasing him, her, whatever they are, would mean that they can go around stealing our, our identities. So the safest place is probably to be with us. 
However, you betray us in any way again, if I even smell a lie, I will kill you myself. Personal lies, because I know that a lot of you tell personal lies, and I just, what if I just don't want to share, like, my family life or something? If it's something that's harmful to the group. That seems fair. That's good. Yeah. Shailun gets up and walks out. Ooh, I let go of Lax. So what do I call you now? Still Lax? I think Lex is still probably I mean, good. you know more than one of my names, so you to tell me. Which name well, does Varo know you by? How about that? Let's start there. Does this stay between us? And then I look over and side-eye Rahelio too, who's still in the room. Yes, of course. Uh, you can call me Trist. Trist. Nice name. I've gone by Lex for quite a while, so yeah, yeah, just Most like I go by it. Emerald. Yeah, it's totally fine. I, I get it. Yeah. Um. Wait. So. 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 Do you know Rosalia? No. Uh, <laughs> I'm. I'm. Stop. Stop. I'm, stop with that. We're gonna. <laughs> we're gonna end the session with that. Do you know Rosalia? <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, so that uh, that got a, a, a bit intense. Sorry, oh. Sin. No oh. heart. Listen, <laughs> I'm here for the spice. I, I love how before the stream you were like, I'm oh. sorry I'm going to be kind of aggressive towards you this stream. <laughs> so, so a question, how spicy was it? Were you like two spicies away from death? Is that how spicy it got there for you for a moment? I didn't do that much damage. I mean, you didn't do a, you didn't do a little bit of damage. To yeah. What did I do? Like, like twenty six? Yeah. Uh, twenty six total. Yeah. That's not nothing. At level six, I'm though. Okay. Yeah, like. Listen, it's not your business, guys. Mind your business. <laughs> All of my two-person secrets today have become four-person secrets, literally moments after. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yeah, is just for me, though. Like, write them down. It's all in my journal. Oh, yes. God, that's oh, really on. <laughs> <Very good here. sighs> you know, all right. That, you, like that journal, you like that journal uh, that you had to have the password to get into when we were kids in, like, oh, the 90s? So good. Good. I never could get back in. Yeah, because yeah, you forget the password. <laughs> I, I like said it weird or something. I don't know. Man, that was and emotionally exhausting. <laughs> yes. Um, and with that, we do close tonight's session. Um, wow, that uh, that was a lot. Uh, we will be back next week on whatever whatever that is. What the eleventh? of September um, to Kickstarter. 10 days left. Yeah. Yep. So 10 days left on the Kickstarter. By Go next ahead. week, there, there'll only be like three days left. So um, please help support us uh, and and head on over to remalternus.com slash kick. Uh, you can get a copy of the comic for um, as low as $10. You get a digital copy of issue uh, two, and that comes with issue one as well. Um, and then if you want the physical copy, because the art is really cool and, you know, souvenirs, that's the wrong word for it. You just want stuff. I like having stuff. If you want to have stuff, uh, $20 level gets you a copy of issue two and, uh, and so on. So like really great rewards, really great prizes, and please help support us so we can keep building this world. Indeed. Um, yeah, uh, a couple math notes, uh, there are, and a lot of them are stubs, but there are over 500 articles, separate articles on World Anvil. Wow. So, um, You've been busy. and I just, I just keep adding to them. Uh, and as I can, I try to flesh things out. 
Uh, Is it just so, like 500 open air graveyards, like in every city? Like we just got an open air graveyard to visit while we're there. Uh, yeah. So there is there is there is an entry for open the open air graveyard that is in there, um, and uh, yeah. So uh, it, it slowly gets built and the maps get added and everything. So um, and of course the players are helping me build it as they come up with stuff as they come up with places they're from and everything like that. So again, thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks to the player cast for hanging out with me and just honestly entertaining me with their storytelling prowess. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just super glad to be here. And we'll see everybody here next week, 8 p.m. Eastern time, like clockwork. Good night in North America.